Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker for today, uh, Roger Kahn. Senator Kahn is a former Saginaw County Commissioner who was elected in November 2004 as the state representative for the 94th District. In November 2006, he was elected as a state senator for the 32nd District, representing Saginaw and Gratiot Counties. So it's a, with a great pleasure I introduce uh, Dr. Uh, Roger, uh, Senator Roger. Servicemen here in, in Michigan to be American made. Now one would think that you wouldn't have to pass a bill to do that. But unfortunately, there is a conflict in life between what something costs and what something is valued. The value is in recognizing our country, our servicemen, their service, and honoring them in this life and in the next. We needed a law. And that uh, was passed this year. In uh, 2012, passed a bill that requires flags flown over government buildings to be U.S. made. You should need a law to do that. But we did. Because, again, people need to be reminded of what we value. We value us. We value our service, our children, our military, our institutions our way of life, our culture. And the flag, this flag, is representative of that for all of us. And so, that now is done. Similarly, a year before that, 2011, passed a bill to require the Pledge of Allegiance to be said, to be said in school. You shouldn't need a bill to do that. But as, as it seems to be common in the themes here, it wasn't being said universally in the schools in the state of Michigan. It is now. And in the saying and the recitation of the Pledge of Allegiance, you have an opportunity to think about the meaning of it. And in particular, I'd say you get to think for a chance to think of for a moment about what we added to the pledge, the words under God, and how that should be reflected in our lives. Among the things that we talked about or just heard about with Masons. In 2008, as you know, we've had terribly trying and difficult conflicts in this century. Hard to understand sometimes how that defends America. Hard to understand how it wouldn't. Who we're fighting. But I'm thankful that as compared to when I was 18, 19, and 20, and we were in Vietnam, that it is clear that our servicemen deserve our thanks, our respect, our gratitude, and our love. And I see that, and I'm glad for it. So in 2008, and we changed in Michigan the way we approach veterans returning and reacclimatizing themselves uh, to civilian life here. How does somebody who has had to deal with the difficulties, the challenges, the scary times of uh, war, had to see difficult things, awful things, 
come to put that part of their lives behind them or aside as best one can and go forward. Well, what is going forward is reestablishing or renewing, revaluing relationships, getting an education, a job, finding out where the local VFW is, I hope, or uh, some service organization. So in 2008, we did we redid that, and I'm glad to say that whereas Michigan, in terms of veteran services, ranked 53rd in the nation. How could you be 53rd? We were behind Guam in, in providing services to our military, to these men. That's shameful. And um, we've had the fastest improvement. We're so low. We've had the fastest improvement in the nation in regards to military service. And the governor of the state of Michigan was over in Frankenmuth talking about this a couple of years ago, and it's continued to be improved. What does improved mean? Well, for example, this year we passed a, a bill oriented towards education for folks that are thinking of leaving the National Guard and may re-up. And it will provide uh, uh, college education credits should they want to further their education in, in the military or thereafter. Those sorts of things individually may not be really Wow, that's a big achievement. But collectively, those go to our values and who we honor and who we want to be and who we cherish. And other things similar to that should be explored by and passed by our governments at all levels and talked about by our families when they see a veteran.